the sector where we can probably stay a lot more constructive. All right, that's the word coming in from Tahir Bacha. But let's get in the next corporate on our show, that is Hester Biosciences. Uh, the stock is close to its 52-week low levels today. Company's quarter two performance was subdued as they recorded a growth in revenue, but profit and EBITDA declined this time around. Rajiv Gandhi, the MD and CEO at Hester Biosciences, is joining us now. Mr. Gandhi, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, well, your poultry division has been weak and industry has been uh, seeing a lot of stress because of higher input costs and low final price as well. That is something that happened in quarter two. Is that something that you are seeing right now as well? What is the outlook? Uh, the poultry industry had been in a reasonable tight situation for the last nearly one and a half year. It appears that things are improving at this point of time and we are keeping our fingers crossed that uh, the poultry industry overall does revive in India, which would then again lead us to higher sales. Uh, but also at the same time, we are... Uh, sort of trying to de-risking all our pol the range between poultry, large animal, etc. So that overall, we do not see these dips impacting up uh, impacting us continuously in the coming quarters. Okay. Mr. Gandhi, you know what interests me is your human uh, vaccine division. We understand that you've been approved for the monkeypox vaccine by the government as well. Uh, can you just tell us where things stand? <laughs> Uh, as things stand at this point of time, we have been one of the shortlisted companies mm -hmm. and our discussions, we have just had one meeting and the discussions are yet to now take place uh, in order to firm up things towards the next steps as far as monkeypox vaccine is concerned. So I am not able to really give any information, not that... Uh, there is anything confidential uh, because it's all with ICMR and everything would be in public domain. It's just that it is yet to progress. You had a tie-up uh, for Covaxin with Bharat Biotech. Uh, and obviously, you know, COVID as a whole has taken a backseat. Everyone knows that quite well. Uh, in that sense, where do things stand on the Covaxin tie-up? And are you going to probably repurpose that facility now? Uh, the facility created by us is a BSL-3 laboratory. As it what stands right now, we are still progressing for making the drug substance for co-vaccine. But with the falling demand of the COVID vaccine, thank God for that in a way, um, we could definitely, uh, we are looking at repurposing that. And the monkeypox vaccine, if at all it goes, it would be a result of such a repurposing. All right, it will be interesting because, you know, I remember you announcing that your intent to get into COVID vaccine at the peak of uh, COVID in the street really liked that. But turns out that COVID and thankfully for humanity has come down. Not so good for your business. Uh, you know, just wanted to understand on your margins a little bit uh, more, Mr. Gandhi. You said that margins uh, uh, have also been impacted because you've been pushing healthcare products uh, forward as well. And that has lower margins. You have increase your marketing costs. So what can you, uh, you know, guide for in terms of improvement in margins as a trend going from here? Uh, the margins in health products have, uh, would always be lower than the vaccine margins. Yeah. So uh, when, when the company tries to grow between uh, the various divisions, that is the vaccines as well as the health products and the health product being a much, much bigger market overall, Yes, there has been a drop in the margins. But what we see and what we foresee is that this drop in the margin, we need to arrest it and we need to again go back to the higher margins that we have seen in the past years. And we are confident of uh, turning the wheel around and again improving the margins. And this would be done by one is higher sales. What has happened right. is that we have even increased our sales force, etc. So all that has also impacted the results would be seen in the coming quarter. So before we let you go, Mr. Gandhi, can you, uh, you know, the first half, revenues have been absolutely flat. Margins have fallen by 12 percentage points from 28% to 16%. Uh, you are saying that these will improve. Can you give us a sense of what this year will end at in terms of revenues? And by when are you targeting the margins to go back to previous levels? Uh, margins definitely will be better in the H2 as what we have forecasted and as what we have planned. 
and talking about the flat sales, etc. The year before that, because of the disease problems and all, it was an exceptional year that we had had in the Q1, Q2 in the last to last year. So therefore, this appears to be flat. But if you see, we have reasonably turned around. Our Q2 sales are up by around more than 25, 27%. And therefore, the trend will now go on uh, in terms of sales. And I would not really be able to give an exact figure or an approximate figure. But uh, this growth that we have gotten up, uh, picked up in Q2, we would want to maintain that growth. And definitely the margins, this is the lowest that we have seen. And there would be a turnaround in the sure. margin. All right, Mr. Gandhi, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking Thank with you. us. So that is Hester Biosciences. It's been an interesting show because we've had Hester Bio talk about how they want to probably look at a monkeypox vaccine. And before that, we had Suven Life, which is confident or hoping to develop a drug for Alzheimer's, which not, has not seen any kind of development in terms of a drug or cure since 2003. No cure, definitely, but not even a drug since 2003. That, uh, we don't have to use any of them and none of the human, uh, uh, you know, none of humanity has to use any yes. of them as well. Anyway, uh, well, hope uh, lives, so hope floats. So, so when life science is up around 7.8%, time for a short break. On the other side, we'll focus on Paytm. The stock is under pressure on the back of a large block deal that took place. We'll get you more details in terms of uh, the buyers and sellers once we're back. Stay tuned.